disheartened by the feather bed pitch. So, by the end of the half day, the game stood level. It didn't remain so long on the second morning. Higgs certainly gave England a glimpse of hope with butchers with it. But then they didn't take another for five live-long hours. There was, in the words of the old rhyme, a smile on the face of the tiger. In years to come, no doubt, the English players will relish the memory of that innings, but for the moment they suffered under the lash. Seymour Nurse is a man of strokes, but he was content to make his century modestly by comparison with his captain. Why should it ever end? The bowlers seemed, if not quite sober as collaborators, at least helpless servants. We'd seen it all before, but it was as thrilling as ever. Even the numbers seemed of little important, though Sober Century received an unusual salute. There was an impressive, if belated, sight of Barber's leg spin and it ended Silver's gay progress, but at a time when it hardly mattered, either for him or for his successors. And when he declared, a huge round figure loomed ahead of the England batting. Boycott and Barber were content to live until the morning, the morning of the third day. England didn't survive long then.